Hey guys, uh, so the purpose of these kind of background uh, videos is just to kind of provide you with a little context for what's happening in Into Thin Air. When they talk about some of these places, it gives you a little frame of reference, a visual frame of reference to kind of know uh, know what they're talking about. Because um, obviously Mount Everest is, you know, obviously a real place and these people were and are real people. So it does kind of provide you with additional background information that I think helps the helps the novel make a little bit more uh, make a little bit more sense to us and helps us kind of contextualize what we are reading about. So I want to go over some uh, just some background information for chapters four and five, just so you can get kind of a visual image of, uh, of what they were uh, of what they're talking about. OK, so we, we are introduced to Rob Hall and there's a picture of Rob Hall. And we're also introduced to his uh, climbing partner, Gary Ball. And I think this was back in chapter two, actually. Or no, excuse me, chapter three. Um, but uh, I did just want to show you some images of what they look like. This is Rob Hall, and this is his climbing partner right here. Um, and here's a picture of Rob. Um, but I also wanted to show you this little really cool video. Um, this is a... Uh, aerial shot of Mount Everest. So John Krakauer talks about looking out the window of one of the airplanes that he's on and he can see Mount Everest. Um, um, he can see Mount Everest from the airplane and he he realizes that, you know, in about a month he's going to be um, at the same height. It's going to be the same altitude. He's going to be standing on a surface at the same altitude as this, as this mountain. And it's, uh, it's a very... Um, uh, kind of a scary prospect for him, but I wanted to show you kind of what Mount Everest kind of looks like from the air, so you could kind of get a visual reference for it. So let's take a look at this really quickly. Um, I don't think you'll be able to hear sound. But right here is Everest. Okay, so this is the, this is Lhotse, which is another mountain they're going to talk about. And this is kind of the coal between Lhotse and Everest. But this is the summit of Everest right here. And John Krakauer talks about how the summit of Everest kind of rips the gash in the jet stream. Um, and that's kind of what this is. This is the jet stream that's kind of being uh, being ripped, kind of being ripped open by the summit of Everest. So pretty uh, powerful image and a pretty uh, kind of almost, um, uh, almost kind of violent image that the mountain's able to, uh, mountain's able to carry forward. Um, I also wanted to show you, kind of give you a frame of reference of geographically where they are. So Mount, Mount Everest sits right, in bet, right uh, um, on the border between Nepal and Tibet, which is technically a uh, part of China. Um, and so Mount Everest sits right here. So part of the mountain uh, is in Nepal, and that's actually where they are climbing from. They're climbing, they're climbing from the Nepalese sides. They land in Kathmandu and then take a helicopter a little bit of the ways, and then they hike the rest of the way up to Everest. Um, up to base camp on Everest, but Everest does sit right on the border. There are climbers that climb from the Tibetan side, but it's a little bit of a harder climb. It's not quite so commercialized on that side. Most climbers uh, climb from the uh, from the south side from Nepal. Um, and then here's kind of a trekking map. So you can see from Kathmandu, they take the helicopter up to Lukla, and then from Lukla they walk and they stop in uh, Podking for a little bit. And then they will kind of make their way up this way up to Everest Base Camp. And then if you look on this next map, here is a Luke Leath and Pod King. And then you see they talked about Le, they talked about Lobuji uh, Village, which is right here. And this is kind of their last stop before they get to Everest Base Camp, which is right here. But Lobuji Village is uh, is the site where Krakauer um, kind of came down with that really horrible coughing fit. Um, where uh, where they would talk about there was like um, basically the the street was just kind of a sewer because they didn't have any running they didn't have any you know um, functioning plumbing so they uh, you know obviously would go to the bathroom in these little outhouses and latrines that would just overflow and so then you know human fecal matter and urine was running down the street and just a very like unpleasant kind of village so I want you to just kind of remember that these are not like hotels they're staying at along the way it's very much roughing it. Um, here's a picture of Lobuji Village. Obviously, very primitive. Um, not a lot of, um, uh, you know, not a lot of uh, standard accommodations that you might think of uh, when you think about traveling somewhere. Um, you know, you think of staying in a hotel or whatever, or even camping. Sometimes looks a little bit nicer than this, but this is this is pretty this is pretty rough right here. Um, also, Krakauer talks about a uh, Krakauer talks about a man who has fallen in a crevasse. 
um, a, a large crevice. And I just wanted to kind of show you, this is an actual crevasse from uh, Mount Everest on the Lhotse face, which we'll talk more about later. But you can see how deep and dark these crevices are um, and how, you know, you can't, a lot of these, uh, you know, go could go several hundred feet um, before you'd actually um, hit the surface. So very, very dangerous situations, but um, there is a fiber that's ventured about falling into a crevasse that they have to go rescue. So kind of a precarious situation they find themselves in. The other thing we're introduced to uh, towards the end of chapter six is the um, is the Kumbu Icefall. Um, and the Kumbu Icefall is a really, really dangerous part of the mountains. It's actually the first big trek. You have to go through the Kumbu Icefall to reach uh, Camp One. So once you leave base camp, you start going up the Kumbu Icefall and then you get to Camp One. The dangerous thing about the Kumbu Icefall is two things. So one is kind of illustrated in these two pictures right here. So there are these giant like ice structures called Siroks. And um, Siroks are, um, could be as tall as, you know, a small, a small office building. I mean, they're really, really big structures. But because they're made of ice and snow, obviously ice and snow can melt. And so it's really dangerous. You could obviously see that if one of these were to fall, it could kill um, one of these people. It could kill someone. So this is a really, really dangerous uh, situation we're looking at here. And this is not really, this is kind of a hard picture. It's not really, the scale of it's kind of weird, but all of these little jagged areas right here is this. So you can kind of see like this is not, uh, it's, this is not a, um, this is not like a little thing that people just walk up and oh, there you are. This is actually climbing through all of these um, Ciroc's and everything right here. It's kind of like, I think Krakauer calls calls it playing Russian roulette because you just never know when one of those things could fall on you and uh, and could kill you. And that has happened before. So a really, really dangerous situation. The other thing about the Kumbu Icefall that's really dangerous are these uh, are these um, crevasses. And so these are navigated by through by walking across ladders. And the ladders are nailed into the snow, right? They're screwed into the snow. But the Kumbu Icefall, is con it's on a glacier, so it's constantly moving. Um, you know, and so if the if the uh, Ciroc's start, if the um, excuse me, if the uh, if the um, hold on just a second, never mind. Okay, nope. Let's go back here. If the um, if the ice structures start to move too far apart, right? Obviously, the ladder can start to um, will start to pull apart and won't necessarily reach. Uh, if the ice structures start moving too closely together, um, it will put too much pressure on the ladder, uh, inward pressure on the ladder, and the ladder could snap and break out of its holdings in the ice. And then obviously if that were to happen, um, you would, um, you could potentially fall to your death. So Krakauer talks about how this is like a sphincter clenching, kind of like a, like a, <laughs> kind of like, you you know, you're clenching your butt. You're so nervous about what could potentially happen to you. It's a really, really dangerous um, scary situation and every time they go through the Kumbu Icefall and they have to do this multiple times um, they go through the Kumbu Icefall you know they go up to camp one and back to base camp then up to camp one and two and then back to base camp you know for that acclimatization purpose and so every time they go up to camp one they have to climb through the Kumbu and it's a really it's a really scary um, it's a really scary situation it's quite terrifying the last person um, we want to introduce you to so we met uh, Scott Fisher um, this is a picture of, um, this is, we met Rob Hall. Sorry about that interruption there. Um, obviously with, um, with, uh, Scott Fisher was the head of Mountain Madness. So Scott Fisher and Rob Hall, um, were kind of competitors, but had a mutual respect for one another. Um, and so we'll take a closer look at, um, Scott Fisher. There's some really, uh, Scott Fisher has a really interesting backstory. A lot of, a lot of, um. A lot of odd things have happened to Scott Fisher that kind of make him the man um, that uh, that he that he that he was when he climbed ever when he climbed Everest in '96. And you could possibly argue that maybe some of those experiences ultimately led Scott Fisher to making some of the choices um, that maybe ended in his death. So there's some background information on your reading assignment, um, and I uh, just wanted to show you some pictures, give you some context. Obviously, if you want to know more, any more uh, about any of this, you can do a little Google search. That's kind of what I did to just kind of teach myself about the mountain. Um, but um, but anyway, yeah, I hope you uh, hope you kind of enjoyed that, and uh, I will uh, be sharing some more information with you guys real soon. See ya.